So firstly, uh, thanks so much for Emily for the great introduction, because she's introduced a lot of the things that this is built upon. So this is a, a DARE funded project. This is one of the, the five driver projects that were funded, have, are being funded currently this year. Um, and this is the Sartre project, which is standard architecture for trusted research environments. Um, and what's really good about presenting this work here today, and as Emily was, was trying to say, is that, you know, there's call to action to, there's a lot of overlap between the health informatics community and, and the RSE uh, community. And I think there's, there's plenty of scope for more overlap. Um, having come from um, a non-health environment, um, I think there's there's lots of things that we can learn in health informatics and in health that have already been solved more generally by the RSE con community or RSC community um, around openness, collaboration, um, you know, reproducibility, all those sorts of things, um, because the field has come from a completely different direction. And I think growing with the HPC aspects and large scale imaging, large scale data, I think we need to work more in, in a collaborative and open source um kind of way and this is what i'd like to talk about in sartre that's what we tried to build on um that kind of rsc like way of working um and as i say so i'm from the university of dundee but this this is a project that's a cross group cross institution so together the collaboration of the alan turing institute um research data scotland ulster university um and ucl and i think if i miss and then we've got we've got public partners as well, but I'll talk about that in a bit later. So the need for Sartre. So this isn't a philosophical question, but it can be. Um, as Emily has quite clearly said, you know, there's a huge potential for TREs. We need TREs to be able to work with sensitive data. It doesn't have to be he just health data. There's other types of sensitive data, whether it's commercially sensitive or other types of information that you don't necessarily want to share openly. Um, and TREs enable research. They're not, they're not restrictive. They're restrictive in a sense, but they're not to stop re research. They're to enable research on these difficult to access data sets. Um, and so by enforcing and encouraging good security, then you know, we allow the researchers to work in, a, in, a, in that safe environment. And then that gives the confidence of the data controllers. So the people that are sharing the data, they're confident that you are not going to do anything that's nefarious or accidentally leave the, the laptop on the train and, and leak the data or whatever. It's it's highly controlled and highly um uh and highly a safe place for to store data and to work on data, particularly. And currently the landscape is a bit fragmented. It's actually quite a lot fragmented. Um there's TREs all over the country doing very different things. So there's the ONS that are doing lots of administrative type work and researchers can access that their data through the secure research service. So if you're wanting to do research on census data, for example, uh, then you go there. Um, and there's others around the country. And in, in Scotland, we have a we have a network of TREs um, for doing primarily for health data. Uh, and the NHS in England is, is starting to roll out a large scale network of what's called SDEs there, which are essentially the same thing as TREs. And they're all very diverse and they all tend to focus on their own local needs for their local data controller or for their local governments. Um, and currently there is no standard for TREs. Um, so this project is one of the driver projects uh, that was funded to try and identify a standardized architecture. So we're just designing a specification to do that um, for a baseline co-created with the community we're not imposing any, on a, anyone and the idea ultimately is to support the accreditation process for tres um, of which there are several standards around and to support uh, uh, organizations who want to work with, with sensitive data uh, to to fulfill accreditation requirements um, and ultimately if you have a, a common standard or a common specification that all tres comply with that should help interoperability and be able to work across different domains of these sensitive data and that's the aim ultimately so our approach has been diversity you know we have a diverse group um, in our team um, both uh, uh, academic institutions plus you know, uh, dare uk themselves have been part of the project hdr uk with emily has been part of the project and like i say we have uh two public members who have been part of the project and they've helped us with the language and communication of you know really technical terms and 
trying to deal with this in an area which is difficult to to explain to people in, in a clear and, 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 and way that communicates what we're trying to do well. And they've been really helpful for that. Um, and we've been working in the open throughout. So everything we do is on GitHub, um, uh, including specification, including uh, some other things we're doing, like this talk is, as you can see, it's one of it's one of the repos. We ran a feature survey, which we published the data on that publicly. Um, and so we're doing everything. Uh, everything is a is a pull request. Um, everything comes in as an issue, um, and everything is discussed in the open by the team on GitHub issues. Um, and so this is where the specification is. So that's again built on uh, read the docs through through GitHub. So you can see this is the specification. We're currently in version uh, 0 0.3. We're going to get version one very soon. And essentially, you know, we have we have built this through the interactions with the with GitHub and the community on a regular basis. Um, we've 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 reported on or we've we've published a version, got feedback, and and iterated on the versions with that. And we're now uh, getting close to something that's pretty stable and pretty mature. And I think at that point, more people are going to engage and actually start using the specification against their own uh, trusted research environments, or even organizations who are interested in trusted research environments to actually look at actually what does it, what's the effort required, what do I need to do to, to do and have a, a trusted research environment. So feel free to have a look on there. Um, obviously, if you have questions, contact us. If you want to raise an issue or comment, Again, go on GitHub and raise an issue there if you wish. Um, we also have a Medium blog site, so we've been publishing uh, fairly regularly up that on there on the progress of the project. Uh, and the latest one was not so long ago, um, talking about our, the structure of our um, of our TRE and our, of our specification and the various things that we've been doing in in that space. And um, the way we've managed the, the contribution through this governance, what we call a governance process, again, was through consensus uh, or through discussion and feedback, both with amongst the team and other, with others who've contributed or engaged with us. Um, we've developed a code of conduct, um, which is clearly presented on, on the GitHub page. Uh, so if you raise the open issue, then it comes up with a form and things you have to fill in to make sure you, you fulfill everything. Um, in the community standards, and then there's a clear consensus mechanism to get, to respond and to close the issues and to say whether it gets turned into a PR or otherwise. And like I say, anyone can contribute. Members of the public have contributed, um, you know, code monkeys, you know, whoever, PIs, uh, people in governance and government and things like that have also contributed. So we're not afraid or, or and we encourage uh, all these different types of um, contributions from everyone. Um, everyone's voice is, is equal. Um, and why am I back to this? Okay. Um, and as part of the collaborative work, we run uh, fortnightly collaborative co collaboration cafes, which are co-working spaces where um, every fortnight we raise a question or a topic for people to raise, but or, or to to commute to come together to answer, or people can come to the collaboration cafe with a question or an issue or, or a suggestion of things to do. And we run break, breakout sessions through that hour um, and then feedback at the end, uh, see if we've resolved that. And, and again, if all that feeds into the specification. Um, and so they're synchronous, so we get momentum, we get some engagement and movement, and we can directly move that. Um, and, then, uh, and then we also have asynchronous work uh, outside of those collaboration cafes uh, that you know that can be done on on like I say on, on GitHub, and we do both of those, and they both have advantages to that process. Everything, like I say, everything's co-created um, through GitHub, um, and again, that encourages all the all the openness, and everything's done in in Markdown or, or other suitable technology. So, in terms of the the people we engage with, our various stakeholders. So, we're strategic stakeholders who are influential organizations, they set the requirements of the things that they need. Um, and then they, they also directly engaged with us and then builders and operators of the actual TREs um, who make or run the TRE have a, very much a technical expertise and process expertise as to what the specification needs to kind of fit around. 
Um, and then they collaborate, they, they contact us via collaboration cafes and, and through GitHub. And then users, you know, end users who work in TREs, uh, they're interested in solving their problems and dealing with, with productivity. And so we've dealt with the user testing session uh, around that. Um, and they also came in collaboration cafes and, 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 other, and other places. And we've done with our with our public engagement team, we've run some public engagement. Uh, we ran one last night here. So we're trying to do a four nations approach um, in Scotland, Ireland, or Northern Ireland, England, Wales. And um, we ran two early ones to get feedback about what is it the public are interested in. And then now we're, we're, we're kind of in the response phase to say, right, this is a specification. Have we captured what the public want from that? And we've done some infographics and we're, we're about to uh, launch a, a series of videos so we're leading by example we're doing everything ourselves and we're, we're evaluating ourselves as well so um uh, uh at the university of dundee we run a safe, a safe haven as it's called in scotland or a tre alan turing institute have their data safe haven so we're evaluating the specification that we've brought together to see if we we hit the mark as well so the main aim now for the last couple of months of the project is sustainability. You know, this, this specification, we've we've spent a lot of time, a lot of effort, brought in a lot of knowledge across the community to, to make the specification um, useful and suitable for the, for the community. Now it needs to kind of breathe and, and take its own life. So now we're focusing on how do we sustain that. Um, develop a governance model, develop a, an organization that can take it on after the end of the project. And so we need, you know, dedicated time and effort and resource to do that. So we're trying to look for funding and then other things and, and engage uh, community response for that. So what have we learned? Um, benefits of working in the open, better engagement, transparency and trust. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, you can change things. It doesn't, it's fine as long as you're open and transparent about it. If you make a mistake, change it and, and, and acknowledge that it's fine. And then you get to acknowledge everyone who's got involved in, in the project. Um, I can't remember how many there are at the last count, but there's probably 30 or 40 people who contributed um, primary, just in the, in the code base. Um, but obviously we have many more who've contributed via, via the other means. And we get feedback, you know, this was a very short project, only nine months. So we've needed to get feedback really quickly, very early. And so by getting, input on a constant basis, we could respond and react and be very agile on that point of view. So for example, the survey that we ran very early on had over 100, over 100 responses from 50 odd organizations. And we that made our first iteration of the specification very easy. Um, version control, open working, those sorts of things are pretty standard in, in the RSE community. Um, the collabor collaboration cafes have been really fantastic. Of, Say they're on a regular process, everyone knows where they are, they know when to come, it's open house, anyone can come with a topic they want to talk about, or they can just listen and, and kind of engage if, if they wish. Um, and it's led to, you know, really direct and significant change to, to the project. But the really important thing is you need members of the team there to facilitate. So in each of the breakout rooms, you need someone uh, in the breakout room on a HackMD taking notes and making sure that what's being talked about is captured so you don't lose that because otherwise you could lose it all and, and it, it'd be a real waste of time so it needs it needs uh effort and input from the team to engage to capture and the engagement and that's really important um and like i just said that so you know good engagement takes effort you know it doesn't it, it doesn't you know do it itself you know you can you can bring people in but then you have to continue that engagement and work hard at that at it and um uh as uh, some of you who were here yesterday uh hurry and simon you know very good <laughs> engagement people to bring people in and you know worked really hard to make sure that works really well and the the the, the event yesterday was Kind of testament to that hard work that brings everyone, everyone people in and that you know that was continued through the the Sartre project and you know you have to value everyone in the project so there's no one that's more valuable than any other and we have a right a real spectrum of people like i was saying we have public you know pet members of the public you know uh, uh pis and research application managers and and a whole team of rses and no one was had any particular important more important role than the others um, public involvement is really important. 
certainly for topics that deal with sensitive data like this, but I think if we talk more about the technical, the really cool technical stuff that we do in the scientific community, the more people get on board and understand when things go wrong and understand actually, okay, it's not necessarily such a, ma a major thanks, um, such a major headline. Okay, things go wrong, we fix things, move along, and we learn from those mistakes. Um, so you know, we have to value the public and engage with them and ensure that they are part. You know, we bring them in, and actually, it helps us learn how we communicate with each other because actually, we lose a lot of stuff by talking in jargon. We think we're being helpful in communicating with each other, but actually, jargon hides a lot of things. And actually, if you learn to speak clearly and, it, and communicate well it helps everyone in the team not just uh you know the public members or the lay members or the new members to the team if you continually talk like that then it's helpful throughout but recruiting the public is difficult <laughs> so you know but again effort you know helps with that so final reflections on, on on the project itself you know we need standardization we need to bring the community on board with us otherwise you know we're just imposing a standard and no one's going to do that um and you know it takes it takes an effort to do that so i'd like to thank our funders so dare uk um funded has funded all this uh, the majority of this work um there's been support of the ellen turing institute as well have, have brought into this uh to support this work that we've done over the last uh, seven months so far with a couple of months to go this is a lovely team um most of them there's there's loads and loads of other people that obviously that have contributed but this is kind of the the core team as it were that we meet every week or so and obviously everyone else who's contributed to the specification. So to wrap up, please join us, hook up, find out what you want to find out more about TREs or you know the real world of what, what TRE looks like. Um, and please get engaged. Thank you for your time. Okay, so uh, we've got a few questions. First one at the top. So is Sartrus UK specific or does the collaboration include working with defining TRE standards worldwide? Could there even be a worldwide standard TRE, or is there too much diversity in data legislation for this to be possible? Really good question. Um, so currently, yes, it's UK specific. Um, TREs are, there aren't many nations who do TREs like we do in the UK. Um, Australia and Canada are other countries which are kind of look, are doing very similar things. But outside of that, TREs are fairly unusual. Um, so history, I think, I don't actually know why I think, yeah, I'm not sure why specifically, I don't know. Um, um, so could there be a worldwide standard? Absolutely. Although this isn't a standard at the moment, it's a specification. So it's kind of, it's a voluntary guide to see how a TRE can be made. Um, and we are in releasing implementations of that standard that are based on open source code bases, both from, from Dundee and the Ellen Turing Institute. Um, so there are ways to, to apply your own version of a compliant a TRE. Um, and I don't think a standard TRE is feasible. I know the Goldacre report who talked about this in the Data Saves, Saves Lives was, you know, have fewer TREs, have one, you know, one or two very large TREs. But as like Emily said, I don't think that's either appropriate or even re realistic. Um, so I think it, it is possible to have a worldwide specification, a worldwide standard. Um, you know, I'm now I'm now involved in some EU projects uh, together with HDR UK, uh, trying to look at TREs within within the EU space as well. Thank you. Uh, so the next question we have: Oh, great project! What's the long term vision? I mean, it's really well, world domination, right? Um, <laughs> uh, you know, interoper interoperability, just about. So ideally, you know, we don't want everyone to do things differently. You know, we're trying to do things as as commonly as possible so that we we do the hard stuff the same and then we collaborate on the easier stuff and, and you know, the plumbing sort out and then we just deal with the interesting stuff that we want to do and not have to do the same thing again and again. So hopefully this is part of that 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 puzzle. And uh, is there a description of how you ran the collaboration cafes available somewhere? They sounded really interesting. Cool. Thank you for the question. Um, yes, it's on our Medium page. There's a whole blog post about collaboration cafes um, written by Harry at the back there. So. Um, 
uh, yeah, it's really detailed. So please uh, read it. If uh, if there's anything else you want to find out or know about it, please contact us. We'll happy to share. And the final one that's on the slide at the moment. Um, oh, it's a follow on, I guess, from the question about other countries not having TREs. Is it possible other countries are just using a different name or acronym for TREs is why you don't know about them? It's actually worse than that. We have different acronyms in this country. <laughs> so in Scotland, they're called safe havens. Uh, generally, the TREs, but like I said, the ONS and things like that have things called like they have the uh, secure research service. Uh, NHS England have, have started calling them secure data environments. Um, but yeah, data safe havens, secure computing environments. Yeah, there's, I mean, it's language, right? Everyone uses a different name to describe the same thing. So um, TRE sent, he feels to be the kind of the, the intersect way is most common, but you know, there are different areas that call it different things. So that's all the question on Slido. We do still have a few minutes left. If anybody in the room has a question, I can pass the microphone to them. But if everybody's asked everything they want to, um, can we just thank Chris again? Then thank you, Chris.